Smoke Master D coming at you with another episode of Barbecue Buyer's Guide. This time on mid-sized traditional offset smokers with chambers that are 20 inches wide and between 36 and 42 inches long. This isn't an extensive list, by the way. If there's a smoker of this size you think I should have included, please put it in the comments and I may put it in a follow-up episode. And here I have some chapter times for you. Please remember to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. And here we have the prices. Starting with the 36 by 20 Spirit Deluxe Offset at $2,699 from Anchor Grill Company. Workhorse Pits just upped their prices. The 1969 is now $2,775 at its base price. With the addition of the Cowboy Firebox and Upper Shelf, which they call Fully Loaded, it's now $3,400.85 with those options. On their new website, by the way, you can only buy it with the Second Shelf and Cowboy Firebox option at the moment. Blue Collar Products, who make blue collar smokers, has this Blue Ribbon Series Backyard Smoker for $2,495. 1904 Pits has their Forsyth Smoker for $3,249. And here on this slide, we can see these smokers' price differences a bit more visually. The price hike for the worst course pits, especially the upgraded fully loaded version, has pushed it to the top of the chart. And here we have a maps page which I like to include because shipping can add a lot to the cost of smokers of these sizes. We'll start with the Anchor Grill Company in Lake Crystal, Minnesota. 1904 Pits is in St. Louis, Missouri. Blue Collar Smokers is in San Antonio, Texas. Lastly, we have Workhorse Pits, which is moving to Cleveland, Georgia, which is about 45 minutes northeast of where that dot has their original location on the map. That small map in the bottom right-hand corner was for the workhorse's in-house shipping. It provided a more affordable and secure option for shipping since its inception. The store representative I spoke to seemed optimistic that they would keep that service, but now that they're moving towards a dealership model, it's not entirely certain whether it'll stay or go. On this page, I have pictures of the cooking racks. On the Anchor Grills, this picture is of an older model of their offset. It was the best picture of their racks that I could find. Both are pull-out and standard. The Workhorse 1969 receives an extra thermometer when you add the top rack. The price for that extra rack is not listed on their new website currently. I decided not to list it here, but it was somewhere around $160. The Blue Collar Smoker only has a bottom grate. Uh, there is no option on their page for a top rack, though if you talked to that company, they might be able to, to do that. The 1904 Pits has a bottom pullout rack as well as a top rack for an extra $150. At a glance, here we have the numbers for the square inches of these offset smokers. And here we see that the Spirit Deluxe and Forsyth, though they have similar sized chambers, are at very close uh, main chamber square inches there, the 646 and the 665. The thing about it is that the Spirit Deluxe has a wider door, which is important when you have pull-out racks because you can only make those racks as wide as the door is wide. The workhorse and blue ribbon Smokers are a bit longer, I think, which adds to their extra space as well as the fact that their lower grates are not pull out. The dollar per inches squared for the main grate puts the blue ribbon smoker first at $3.10, then the Workhorse 1969, which used to easily take first place before their price change. Then we have the Anchor Grill Spirit Deluxe, and lastly, the Versailles from 1904. When we include the top racks, the dollar per inch is square shifts for most of these smokers. The Anchor Grill Company, which includes their second level grade as standard, fares the best, taking the top spot at $2.37 per inches squared. 
The upgraded Workhorse Pits 1969, which includes the price for the top shelf and the Cowboy Firebox, comes in next at $2.60. Then the Forsyth, taking into account the $150 for its top rack, brings its dollar per inch squared down to $2.77. The Blue Ribbon Smoker, which doesn't have a top rack offered on their website, stays at $3.10. Then we have the 1969 and Forsyth without the second rack where they were before. Now here we see the grilling and the firebox. Both the Anchor Grill Company and the 1904 pits included standard, whereas there's an upcharge for the workhorse pits. It of course has now become part of its fully loaded option. Blue Collar Products doesn't list an option for cooking in the firebox on their website. They seem, however, like the kind of shop that would likely quote you a price if you asked for it. Now let's look at the dampers on the back door. The Spirit Deluxe has the hourglass damper, which is the same kind that I have on my Belfab pit. I have to say, I like how I'm able to easily watch my fire through uh, the top of that hourglass. Um, it makes it a very enjoyable experience. The Blue Ribbon Smoker has the Chud Style Notch System full door damper. The Workhorse Pits uses a bow tie style, and the 1904 Pits has a windmill style. And now for protective coatings. Anchor Grill Company uses powder coating. In the past, I've talked about how I prefer the linseed oil options on the Workhorse and Blue Collar Smokers that you see there. Powder coating fades and scratches over time, but unlike the linseed oil, there's no way to really refresh it except to take it off and put something else on. I don't know as much about the clear coat on the 1904 pits, uh, which is an option on the workhorse pits. It appears to be rather expensive, though, just from that $935.07 price you see there. And if the added cost on the workhorse pits is reliable, that clear coat makes up a significant portion of the cost of the 1904 pits, which might be about $2,250 if they use the linseed oil option instead. The last option for the workhorse pits is high gloss black paint that would cost $1,067.87. And now for the casters, we have heavy duty casters for the Anchor Grill Company. Well, they don't say they look about to be five inches um, as my that would be my guess. The workhorse comes with six inch solid rubber casters that will handle regular sidewalk and patio terrain fairly well. Uh, you know, the stray rock or pebble. Blue Collar uses industrial five inch casters. The 1904 pits use five inch casters as well. Now for metal thickness, we see that the Spirit Deluxe Blue Ribbon Smoker, and the Forsyth all use quarter-inch steel, and the 1969 uses something closer to 3 8 inch steel. Uh, I did not upgrade uh, the pounds there on that slide, uh, but if we come to this next one, and I don't know exactly why this number changed, but the workhorse pits say that theirs is 875 now. Um, one thing to note, especially about the other three smokers, is that they are approximations. The Blue Ribbon and Forsyth are about 500 pounds each, and the Spirit Deluxe is about 600 pounds. Now, for dollar for pounds, we see that the Workhorse Pits still comes out the best, followed by Anchor Grill Company, then Blue Ribbon Smokers, and 1904 Pits. The heaviness of the 1969 certainly makes it look good here, but as to how beneficial that extra eighth inch of steel is while you're cooking is hard to say. It helps heat retention a little bit, but it also increases warm up time and just how much it's better. Like I said, it's hard to say. Now let's take a look at shelf options. The Spirit Deluxe has shelves included standard on their main chamber as well as their firebox. Workhorse Pits has what they call a smart shelf option which doesn't appear as an option currently on their new website. Will they add it back? I don't know. But I've never liked the smart shelf, which seems like it would be smarter if it was nearer the door where you needed it. The Blue Ribbon Smoker has a stainless steel shelf, which may be its best feature that it has.
The 1904 Pitts doesn't have any conventional shelves that I know of, but one picture showed a shelf that looks like it could be for a wired thermometer attached to the stack, uh, and it has that uh, probe port, so uh, it looks like it could work fairly well to hold uh, your, your thermometer while the, those wires go through there. I don't know if this comes standard or it was simply a one-off for a customer, but I thought it looked interesting, so I'll put the picture there. For unique features, uh, we have the Spirit Deluxe with a counterweight for its door, as well as a shelf on their firebox, which we just mentioned earlier. The Workhorse Pits has its fold-down stack, which makes it shorter and easier to throw a cover on top of. The Blue Ribbon Smoker appears to have a shelf for a water pan, which might be rather helpful, actually. You want to keep that some moisture in that chamber. It helps even out the temps and helps uh, smoke to stick to your meat. The Forsyth has a door counterweight and a tuning plate. I found a picture with this umbrella holder, but again, this may be a one-off and nothing in the description mentions this feature. For better heat distribution, the 1904 Pitts comes with the tuning plate that we just showed. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of tuning plates for a few reasons. One, they turn your smoker into a bottom flow smoker, which isn't terrible per se. Seems like it defeats, in my mind, the purpose of having a horizontal offset smoker, though. Secondly, if you cook hot with it, radiant heat from that plate could overcook the bottom of your meat. Um, so just things to take into consideration. Uh, hopefully that plate's not welded in and you can take it out when you want and use it when you want. The Spirit Deluxe only has a single downward facing baffle plate. It's likely that the blue ribbon smoker has the same. These smokers will be likely a little bit hotter on the firebox side and you'll want to do your own test to see how uh, you want to run them. Biscuit tests or uh, bread tests as they may be. The workhorse pits use what they call computational fluid dynamics to design their offset. From the evidence I've seen, workhorse pits run very well for offset smokers, perhaps the best. But things like where you put the fire in the firebox and how you arrange the dampers can still greatly alter the heat distribution in the main chamber. Workhorse's claim of 5 degrees across the chamber is not exactly false. But it's also far from the whole story of what's going on inside their smokers. Uh, whatever offset smoker you get, one of your tasks would be to learn how to make it do what you want and use whatever its heat distribution is to your own best advantage. Now for upgrades. Only Workhorse Pits has a cover available for $234. 1904 Pits say they are working on getting a cover available. Anchor Grill Company Blue Collar Smokers have no upgrades listed beyond the upper shelf option for the 1904 Pits. And now for my thoughts. And now for my thoughts. The Blue Ribbon Smoker seems like a solid choice if you're in the Texas area. It's a basic no-frills smoker that will do it, the job for you at a reasonable price. I do also love that stainless shelf and the water pan shelf too. The 1904 pits I'm a little less impressed with. The clear coat adds a lot to the price. And for my money, I'd rather do linseed oil and add a new coat every year or so just to spiff it up. The door counterweight is nice. I've already given my thoughts on the tuning plate. Probably works fine, but I'm more impressed with their direct heat cookers that I've reviewed than I am with their offsets. The Anchor Grills Company Spirit Deluxe seems to have good value and good features. If you live anywhere near Minnesota, you should definitely consider them. Now, uh, for workhorse pits. They've been a longtime favorite of mine, but this price hike and their new website, which for the moment has greatly reduced options for the smoker, have put its status as the market leader in jeopardy. They are certainly well-built and designed offset smokers, but will that be enough? This is a question I intend to look at in more depth with an updated look at the competitors of Workhorse Pits 1975. That's an episode I did a while back now, but I'm going to re-look at those smokers and hopefully I'll have that episode out soon. Now, those are my thoughts. You probably have your own, so why don't you go ahead and put those down in the comment section. Mm -hmm.
And if you own any of these smokers, please put a review in the comment section too. And as always, go get your smoke on, y'all.